everybody wanted to bring you a what's new at Ulta haul. I don't know about you guys, but I am kind of obsessed with the section of Ulta's website where there's a little button you can click and it says like new or what's new. And I'm always checking that. <laughs> For some reason, I've kind of obsessively want to know like what are the new skincare items? What are the new makeup items? And if I'm honest, I kind of want it to slow down. I kind of would like to feel like for, I don't know, 24 hours, like I'm on top of things. But I got some new things, some new palettes, individual makeup products, a few new skincare items that I want to talk about, and also um, a few new items from Walgreens. I just kind of have to talk about these things real quick because my lip is kind of like the captain of my look today, so needs a mention. New um, matte lipsticks from Milani. I picked a couple of them up, and I'm kind of obsessed. If you can't tell, if you follow me on Snapchat, you're kind of getting a sense of this too, but I'm loving the deep lips lately, and I don't give a rip if it's summer. I still think they're awesome. Um, I actually I think back to when the absolutely gorgeous Chrissy Teigen was on the red carpet a few times during the spring. And I believe more than once she was sporting a really dark vampy lip with her look and I thought it looked amazing. And it's like, who cares what time of year it is? If you like it, do it, right? And I actually think um, these darker tones on my skin tone look a little bit better when I've got a little more sun or a little more depth to my skin anyway. But I'm just really liking the look. So when I came across several new matte shades and there were some others, there was like a light pink, there was an orange um, in this line of, of new matte lipsticks from Milani, but I really wanted a couple of these dark ones, so I am wearing the darkest one, Matte Fearless, and it's like a really deep kind of plummy grape type shade. I had a couple swatches on my hand, but then I washed my hands and they started to come off. One thing to note about this, and I haven't even been wearing it that long, but I mean naturally where lip products tend to wear off is the inner part of the center of your lower lip, so you'll start to see it probably even by the end of this video. It'll start to look a little more berryish and maybe a bit less purpley, but I feel like if I'm going to wear a deep lip color, I really do like the matte shades because I feel like they're more likely to just stay where you put them, you know? As much as I love that really deep butter gloss that I Instagrammed over the weekend, like, it's a tricky thing to pull off. I talked about that in my review over on the Express channel, but anyways, um, this is Matte Fearless, and then the other one I got is called Matte at love. And so if you look at them together, you can see uh, this one's much more plummy. This one has loads more red to it, like kind of a brick red. And so here's those two swatched. <laughs> How far can I turn? Matte Love is actually quite a bit lighter than I was expecting it to be. So I was glad I took the plunge and got Matte Fearless. And these might actually be really pretty, like maybe worn together, like a little bit of Matte Love in the center, kind of blended out with the other one. I don't know, but those were in a new uh, display in at Walgreens. Seriously, I've been wearing this thing throughout the video. I can see like my hair caught in it. Yuck. Milani also has come out with some brow pomade type products. They're actually called Stay Put Brow Color and I got it in dark brown which is the darkest shade that it came in. A lot of times I can make lighter shades work in my brows. For example, I've been using that e.l.f. brow pencil in taupe and just loving it for a quick fill-in but judging by the um, range of shades that this product was available in, I felt like this was the coolest tone. This is what I'm wearing in my brows today and I do think it's a total match. Um, it's just deep and dark and um, definitely cool enough for me. And it comes with this little double-ended brush, so a nice angled, uh, very precise angled brush there and a spoolie. really like the consistency of this. It's not too, like, smooshy. You know, it's creamy without being too goopy. Like, the Salon Perfect was a bit goopy for me, and I felt like anytime I put my brush into it, I picked up way too much and my brows got overloaded. This is, like, just a really nice texture to put your brush into, because you can build up a little at a time and not go too far, but it's plenty pigmented. And it does have some hold to it. That wasn't even really a claim. I mean, it claimed to be long wearing, but it didn't really talk about like holding the brows in place. And from a swatch on my hand, I did like a little bitty swatch here, but it's not rubbing off either once that sets. But that's it from Walgreens. Um, the new stuff from Ulta, I got the new Too Faced Born This Way Absolute Perfection Foundation. Um, I really like the packaging of this. It's like a frosted um, 
um, glass bottle and then a pump, so yay for pumps! This is in the shade Light Beige. That turned out to be a really great shade match for me, actually. I was so wondering as I was looking at the colors on the website, like, what the heck? But this does work really well. I'm a complete doofus and I forgot to wear this for this particular video where I'm trying to wear a lot of the things that I hold. It was like I temporarily forgot about this, but I have been wearing this um, in some other videos, Snapchat, Instagram. I think this has a really nice finish on the skin. I love how it's like a straight up satiny finish. Um, once I put it on, like blend it out all over the skin, I feel like I have the most subtle but beautiful little glow going on there. And the staying power has been great as well. From the first day I wore this, actually, I was outside and I was sweating and it was just super duper hot. It is really hot down here. Hence the, yeah, don't be jealous of my nursing tank. I forgot I had these actually. I had like two and I was wearing them all the time after Belle was born. And then I think I put them away with maternity stuff. And I'm like, yeah, these are awesome. Super, you know, easy access and lightweight and comfy. Back to the foundation though, this had excellent staying power for me and I fully expected it to, you know, break down under the hot conditions because I was sweating. I was like blotting moisture off of my face and this still looked fresh and even at the end of the day. So I don't know. I'm having really great luck with this so far and I think the coverage, uh, they called this, I think they said flawless medium to full coverage or something like that. I don't know that this is quite as good of coverage as even just the regular Estee Lauder Double Wear. I think maybe it's because it's just got that hint of a sheen to it. It doesn't end up looking quite as flat and matte and flawless, you know, as something like Double Wear does. I still think it's really beautiful. I'm going to keep trying it for a bit before I review it just because I like to be sure um, how a foundation's reacting with my skin. You know, maybe it looks great, but it's causing some sort of a breakout. But so far, so good with that. I've really been liking it. I got the new Laurent Pro Contour Palette, which comes with a brush. The brush was part of the reason why I wanted to get this, and it is now part of the reason why I don't really like it very much. I mean, I like the palette. I enjoy the products in here, but this brush is really hard to use with it because it's so like, I, I think it could be good with some other things that I have, but it's so dense and like not very fluffy. And these colors are like pigmented right up there with what you know and love from the Lorac Pro eyeshadow palettes. So you stick something so small into one of these contour shades. They tell you in this little pamphlet, like use the domed side, so this, to lay down the product and then use the flat side to kind of blend it out. Uh, no way, no way in heck is anybody going to be satisfied with that look. Like it's, it looks so streaky and unblended. Maybe if I was using this shade, but I mean, even using that, I could not get it blended to a point where I liked it. So then I thought, okay, I'll just use this to apply and then I'll pull in like a brush like this to buff it out more. Still, I thought it looked too streaky. If I use something like this, this is like the small contour from Sigma. If I use something like this from the get-go, I'll be happy with my look. It's like it's not the product's fault. It's just you've got to be really careful with this Oop, excuse me. <laughs> you got to be really careful with this brush. It's soft, dense, nice quality, but I think it might be better with less pigmented powders because then it would pack it on more when you need it. These don't need to be like laid on thick. Okay, so there's light contour, dark contour, and medium contour, and then beige highlight, yellow highlight, and shimmer highlight. Today I'm wearing the medium contour here in a mix of the medium and deep around my hairline. Everything in the palette is matte except the shimmery highlight. Everything, like I said, super nicely pigmented. The medium contour, I think, is going to be a shade that's really important to a lot of people. I think some people might think that that's a little bit warm, so I don't know if that's maybe a deal breaker for some of you, but it worked pretty well with my skin. Something I'm really loving is the fact that the highlights are so pigmented, like even this beige matte highlight. Look at how much that shows up. So if you really want to create some definition and contrast, which I did, like right up here in the under eye area, I thought that worked great. And that shimmery highlight is quite intense as well. So I'm liking this so far. Um, I definitely like it better than my Anastasia contour kit. I feel like there's more like across the board consistent pigmentation compared to the NYX contour kit, but I don't necessarily know that you'd need this one over that. I need to do a little bit more comparison there. So stay tuned for more of a review on that, but I just wanted to tell you what I know right now. I also wanted to get the Lorac Pro Matte Palette. So this has the same size shadows as the regular Lorac Pro palettes have, but you're just getting eight of them. So top row, classic brown neutrals, and then bottom row, you're getting a burgundy and a pink mauve. Not that I didn't already have these kind 
kinds of shades in my collection, but I gotta say, those those colors down there, that's what drew me into this. They're super pigmented. I mean, if you enjoy the matte shades from your regular Laurent Pro 1 and 2 palettes, I mean, these are just as pigmented. Or maybe you don't have any of those palettes and you really only care about matte shadows. This is a great basic matte palette because you've got your black, your dark brown, light and medium browns, um, great highlight shades that you'll definitely get use out of. I was wearing this the other day and be advised, you can get a really freaking dark look with this even without using your darkest two shades. Like, I thought my eye was so, like, deep and smoky. I would say if you've already got the Lorac Pro 1, just the original palette, you might not need this because you've already got a lot of these neutral basics. I think what's really different that they're throwing in is probably this burgundy color. If you're an avid palette collector like me, you may still want it. Or like I said, if you only like mattes, this would be a great thing to have too. I was so back and forth on this, but I decided to get the Too Faced Love palette. This is the same kind of packaging as the Return of Sexy palette. If you remember that from, I don't know, that was probably a few years ago that that came out. Um, but I was seeing this online and not getting too excited about the colors in here, but then I saw, I don't know if it was Too Faced, I think it was on Too Faced Snapchat, they were showing some actual swatches of these shades, and the green really pulled me in. Um, this little quadrant here, or quintuplet, uh, these five looked really pretty also. Of course, I, I mean, I have a lot of shades in this kind of bronzy range as well. It comes with one of the Perfect Eyes waterproof liners in Perfect Black. I haven't found these to be truly waterproof. Like, I, they can do some smudging on my eyes, but they're really, really soft and easy to apply. The other day, I was wearing the green shade and also some of these, like, pinky mauves. And today, I'm wearing the four shades minus the pink in the center. I just did a really defined, like, shade to the outside with this color. Um, this is kind of in my crease and some of this shade, this kind of like golden lilac color is on the lid. This, I didn't love using this shade as my highlight. It has a little, I don't know, pinky lilac tone to it, but I guess it worked out okay. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but there's not really like a classic matte, you know, brow bone highlight in here because this shade is highly, highly shimmery. This shade is kind of sparkly and a little bit dusty. There are some dusty shades in here, but there are also some beautifully intense, gorgeous colors. These dark shades at the bottom, like, oh, this color, I mean, look at that beautiful rose goldness. I mean, seeing it in person, I'm much more impressed by it than I was when I just saw pictures of the palette online. I still got one more palette to talk about, but still, all things considered, this is the most exciting, like, new palette that's coming out to me now that I have it. Yes, it's more exciting to me than the Naked Smoky. I actually didn't get this from Ulta. I ordered it off of Urban Decay's website as soon as I could. And I mean, I'm not knocking Urban Decay's quality because you know I love it. I sing their praises a lot, but this palette right now for me, I mean, I've just got so much of this. This is, these shades are so common to me right now. And I actually really enjoyed the Urban Decay smoked palette when that came out because it was like a few jewel tones and some really great neutrals and I loved using that, still do. I'm not sure if they're still selling that, but that was great stuff. And I've only used this for like a couple of looks so far over the weekend. I used this um, shade called High. It's kind of like a pinky toned, really shimmery color. And I used Smolder, which is the plum, and it looked pretty. Just nothing really super different. I can see I've got a nice range of mattes right here, but I wish there were more mid-tones in this palette. I enjoy this dark brown called Whiskey, but I mean something even like matte and lighter than that would have been nice. Or maybe not even in a brown tone, but just a matte that could be used in the crease but not be too terribly dark. But I know this is a smoky palette, so the shades are going to be smoky. I need to work with it some more before I give this one a final verdict. But you look at it side by side with this Too Faced one, and to me this just is a little more fun and exciting, you know? Oh goodness gracious. I do kind of like this packaging. I really like just the magnetic closure that that has, and then it does come with the double-ended brush. It's a crease brush, and then what looks like a nice little smudger brush, which would be great for, you know, a smoky eye look there on the lower lash line. Trying some new lashes from Ulta, although I have seen these sold at Target as well. They're the Vegas Nay Lashes by Ilure. In case you didn't know, she is, they say on the package, Instagram's number one beauty guru. Kind of interesting on the packaging. In one look, she's got like really bright blue eyes, and here she's got like super 
her dark eyes. But I assume that's her here. She looks beautiful. And I got the Easy Elegance style, which looks a lot like, you know, the type of lashes that Demi Wispies are. Maybe a little longer overall, um, but flared out at the ends. You've got a variety of different lengths in there. So I love how those types of lashes really blend in with your own natural lashes. So I was pretty certain I would enjoy those, so that's why I got them. But I am wearing the Shining Star style, and these, I swear, I was looking at them sideways, they look like kind of a double stack type deal happening. They're super dramatic, and they were actually super long left to right. I had to trim off so much, more than I think I've ever had to trim off of a set of lashes. They're still going pretty far in. They're going like nearly into my tear duct. I don't like them going too far, but they feel great on my eyes. The band was actually kind of thick, but it was easy to work with and it really laid right on there. They feel light as air for as thick and dramatic as they are. I am really, really loving this style. And I did something a little different on the eyes today because I went with all the drama up top. I put no eyeshadow on my lower lash line. I just barely put any mascara down there. CoverGirl has had some jumbo gloss balms out for a while, but now they have put out something called called Jumbo Gloss Balm Creams. And to me, from the two shades that I have, it seems like these might be just a little more intense color-wise than what they initially put out. And I have the shade Berries and Cream, and this is called Cherry Cream Pie. Does that make you hungry? Berries and Cream shade right here. I was wearing this recently in a picture and got so many questions about it. I was so surprised, um, but it is gorgeous. It's kind of a mauve with a little bit of shimmer. And typically that little bit of frost in the shade might might have been a problem for me, but something about this very natural looking shade, like all over the lips, it looks so pretty. And then I haven't worn this shade on my lips yet, but this one's just creamy. There's no shimmer in it, the cherry cream pie color. This just looks like one of those pure, really poppin' summery reds. Not super orangey in tone. Maybelline Color Blur by Lip Studio. Haven't really played with this a whole lot yet, but this is crazy. I already had one of these. I had gotten this from Walmart. Um, I had the shade Cherry what's it? Cherry Cherry? Che oh, Cherry Cherry Bang Bang. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't think it worked because I opened the cap, this wouldn't twist up, and I saw, okay, there's this end down here, but it doesn't twist out. I thought I had like a defective product. And then I was talking to Lacey on Snapchat. I'll link to her channel, and she was asking if I'd use these, and I was like, yeah, I actually have one, but it's broken. She's like, well, you do know you have to twist up um, on the end with the little smudger tip. And I'm like, Oh, you're so wise. I couldn't believe I didn't try that. Why did I give up so soon? I don't know. But I guess I'll talk about this shade that I already have. The idea is it says here on the cap, apply to center of lips and then smudge it outward. You could obviously do whatever the heck you want to do, but um, that's their idea, I guess, to give maybe a little bit of an ombre type look from the inside out. I don't know. And there's that red, which pretty much looks matte to me. Once I realized how to work the thing, I wanted to try another color. So I got uh, Plum Please. And and this, again, twists up from the bottom, folks. And then here's the swatch of that. Nice and dark. Another dark lip color to add to my stash. But I've just barely played around with these. Oh, and there goes my lighting again. There goes my light. But I promise I will mess with those some more so I can actually give a review on them. I have been using every morning, actually, to wash my face, although it doesn't feel like it. I've been using that simple micellar water. I reviewed it already on the Express channel. I've continued using that. I'm about a little over halfway done with the bottle. And obviously I don't sleep in my makeup, so I'm not, you know, removing makeup in the morning, but I'm just sweeping it over my face with a cotton ball. Uh, my skin feels very, like, cooled, a little bit hydrated, refreshed. I've been using that, liking that, and because I can't stop, I want to find more of these micellar waters to try. Yeah, that if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality does not apply to me in makeup. I keep wanting to try new things. So um, I found that there were two um, under the new skincare items section of Ulta. I got the Burt's Bees Intense Hydration Nourishing Facial Water with Clary Sage. It says absorbs quickly, moisturizes, improves skin's texture. Texture. So I'm excited to test that out. And then I also got the Boots Botanics Micellar Cleansing Solution 3-in-1 All Bright. And here you're just getting... 
uh, four ounces. This is a whopping 8.4 ounces in this bad boy. Dissolves makeup, unclogs pores, and removes impurities in one easy step for all skin types with brightening hibiscus. And the simple one claimed to be a big makeup removing product also, although I felt like it could do it, but it was a heck of a lot of work. So I don't really like to use it in that way. Maybe this one will be better that way. But this cleansing solution feels as gentle as water on the skin to dissolve makeup, unclog pores, remove impurities, no rinsing necessary um, for use on the face, eyes, and lips. So I have not used these yet, but I will be trying them out for you. But that's all for my haul today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of new things from Ulta, lots of new review material as well. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Are you a sweet baby? Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!